Today we're going to cover how to wind the perfect cake of yarn using a ball winder and swift. Hey everyone, it's Natalie and Toaster. I couldn't bear to move him off this blanket today. I'm about to wind up a skein of yarn and I thought this would be the perfect opportunity to give a really detailed tutorial on how to wind yarn. Sometimes I feel like it's something that is kind of a mystery and so I wanna give all the tips that I have as somebody who used to work in a yarn store and wind yarn and get paid to do it, everything that I've learned so far. So if you've never wound yarn before, this will be a great basic tutorial and if you do have your own ball winder and swift and want to learn some tips to make things even better, I hope that this video will help you. So if you buy yarn from a yarn store or online and it looks like this, you need to wind it before you can proceed on with knitting or crochet. If you buy the yarn in a yarn store, oftentimes they will wind it for you at the time of purchase, sometimes up to a certain number of skeins. It is very labor intensive, so if you do come across a yarn store that actually charges for winding, it's not that uncommon because it is a lot of labor. You may get to the point where you're buying yarn and you want to invest in some tools to actually wind your yarn at home. So you're gonna need a couple of things. One, you will need a ball winder. Mine looks like this. It's from Fiber Artist Supply Company and I will have it linked down below. You will also need some type of swift. The type of swift that I'm gonna show today looks like this. You'll get a better picture of it when I zoom out here in a little bit. It is called an Amish Swift. I think there is a better name for it. And it is also from Fiber Artist Supply Co. The techniques that I'm gonna be showing are not all specific to this type of Swift. You can use it for an umbrella Swift or a squirrel cage. I can't think of any others right now, but there are gonna be some specific Amish Swift um, tips that I'm going to share because these are the types of tools that I have. Other things that you're going to need are a pair of scissors because we need to cut the ties on our yarn. And then if you do have the same type of swift as me, I would recommend having a chip clip to hold the other end of the yarn. Something smaller than this is actually a little bit better, but I'll show you what I like to use as well. So when you buy a skein of yarn like this, sometimes it's called a hank. It's actually one big long loop. So the first thing we need to do is open up the skein. So there's one end that's gonna be smooth where it's bent in half. And then this other end is actually where it's tucked in. So you'll want to try to find one part of that. Keep holding on to it and untuck the other part. And then you can just kind of let it unravel, keep holding on to it, and it's one big long circle. So after you get it opened up, we're gonna to wanna to start winding it pretty much right away. You don't wanna leave this hanging around or anything but we do wanna check something. So most hand-dyed yarns or yarns that are hanked are gonna have one to three or maybe even four ties. There has to be one because there's two ends of this. And then usually there's at least two or three other ones. So the ties look like this. Can you see them? So they're these horizontal ties of yarn going across. So we wanna actually check, I just go through and check all the ties, and we wanna make sure that our strands of yarn are not going across the horizontal ties. So come in close here. Can you see this tie right there? So I'm gonna look actually for the knot on the tie. This is something that I'm gonna cut off later. It's just holding the um, hank together, and I'm gonna pull on it. So now that's nice and taut, and I'm gonna check everywhere that things are overlapping and make sure that my vertical yarns are not coming across. So this one looks great. Where it would look not great is if one of these was going across like this and pulling on my horizontal tie. If I see this, it's, it's common, sometimes it does happen, no biggie, I just wanna fix it by taking this and putting it into the right place. So I'm gonna check all of my ties, front and back, to make sure that everything is looking okay, looks good. And I'm gonna do this a second time actually on the Swift. This is just my initial check. Now one of your ties will have multiple strands of yarn. This is the one 
that actually has our two ends. So that one's a little crazier. So holding it very carefully, we're gonna now go and put this on our Swift. So come on down here. All right. Now I'm gonna be showing this specific type of Swift and I will have this one linked down below. But even if you have an umbrella swift or a squirrel cage, you're gonna do some of these things in a really similar way. Okay, so I'm gonna pretend that I haven't undone that yet so I can show you these things. So for this type of swift, you have four dowels that you're going to use. And I just like to go ahead and place them like two pegs out, and then we can move them out if needed, which we will definitely need for this one. Okay, so take your nice long hank and we're gonna place it around our four dowels. Now, obviously this is not big enough, so I'm just gonna go one at a time, moving it out another place until it's taut. So I'm probably gonna to need to go to the fourth peg kind of rotate it. Now what I will do sometimes, because this is still not taut enough, I don't know if you can see like that extra bit here, is I don't think I can make it into the fifth peg on each one, but I'll do opposite corners. So like these two, I'll go out to the fifth. And if it's not if you end up just having like one out a further peg, that's fine. So we want it taut, but not like so tight that it can't do anything. Okay, so once you have it on here, and this is the same for this kind of Swift and also for an umbrella Swift, we're gonna go around and get the whole hank twisted the right way. So you can see that it's kind of like, it's got some twists in it. I don't know if you can see that, no, it's hard to see. There's some like twists in it. So I'm just gonna go around and kind of get it moved around where it kind of looks like all the yarn is going in one direction. It may not be perfect, but that looks a little better. Okay, final check before we cut anything. We're gonna go through and review all of the ties again and just make sure that same thing that there's no crossovers. Everything is looking good on these ones over here. And then this one, has all of my different ends. All right, we're ready for the next step. Grab your scissors and come in close here because we are gonna start cutting ties. So here's one right here. Let's do this one first. So we're gonna go around and we're gonna cut all of our ties. In this particular one, there are two that are just holding the yarn and then there's one that has the ends. So I'm gonna do the one that has the ends very last. So this one, is just a tie. It's just got two strands of yarn. So I'm basically just gonna cut off this knot and then come in close here so you can see this. I'm just gonna take this tie and slide it out and I can throw these away. And then I'm gonna do that again with the second one that's just a tie. This one here, cut it and pull it out. Okay, so now that takes us to our last one and every skein's a little different. They're not all going to be, have the same number of ties. Some just have one, but I know this one has the ends because it's got multiple, it's got four strands going to the one knot. So what I'm gonna do is cut the knot off now, two of these ends are gonna be another tie. The other two are gonna be coming from my hank. So, one little piece just pulled off here. That's the tie, I don't need that. And then I've got these two ends. Try to hang on to both of them. Where did my other one go? Here it is. <laughs> Try to hang on to both of them because one we're gonna to use to wind and the other one we need to secure. Now, this is true for this type of Swift and for umbrella Swifts, although I'm not entirely sure how to secure them on umbrella Swifts, but you definitely can on these. 
If we don't secure the other end of the tie, it is going to get tangled around the gears of our Swift. So we definitely wanna do that. Now I need to pick which one of these ends I'm going to put through the ball winder and I want whichever one is gonna come off of the Swift easiest. So normally there's one that's kind of coming like around the outside and there may be one that's more on the inside. I wanna choose the one that's coming more on the outside. So with this one, I am going to choose this end for my ball winder because as I kind of follow this end around, it is coming mostly off the outside of my yarn. Whereas, this one, even though it's coming off the outside, I can see that it's kind of coming from underneath, which means it's more likely to kind of get caught when I'm trying to wind it. So let's go ahead and take this one that's not as great and let's secure it. So I think since it's kind of coming from underneath, I'm actually gonna pull it underneath. This might not be perfect, I might have to rearrange it. And I'm gonna secure it right here to this first peg. So this is where you need your chip clip. <laughs> so I discovered this, you definitely want something a little smaller than this. This one might be a little bit heavy, but you're basically gonna take that end that we're not winding, wrap it around, and then just clip it with the chip clip. This is gonna keep it and prevent it from getting wound around the center of our Swift. Now, what I have got is my friend made me, I don't know if you can see this, my friend made me, it's just a piece of foam with a slit in the top for the yarn and a hole in the bottom for the peg so that what I can do here is tuck this on and take that end and put it through the slit like that. But a chip clip works too. Just make sure you have one that's small enough. Okay, <laughs> we're almost ready to wind. It's a lot of setup, but it makes the winding so much smoother. Okay, so come back to that. You should have one strand of yarn left and we're gonna wind that on the winder. So back up for just a second so I can kind of show something. So before I actually put this on the ball winder, I am going to do a test round. <laughs> so I'm actually gonna manually by hand go one rotation, maybe two rotations, around the Swift, just to make sure that everything is coming off correctly, that I haven't accidentally twisted my second end around the first one. Okay, so come back to the ball, or to the Swift here. Let's do a test rotation. So just stay right in here close. Um, all I'm gonna do is I'm just pulling on this and letting it rotate. And it's winding around just fine. So I'm just checking to make sure it doesn't get tangled. Actually, I'm getting a tangle right here. So I've actually probably picked the wrong end here. I don't know if you can see this, but it's actually coming from the inside. So I have two options here. I can go back to my other end or I can flip this whole thing. And I think I'm gonna do that. So I am just gonna take my whole thing and I'm gonna flip it so that now this end is running from the outside. And I'm just gonna go all the way around, flipping, flip, and last one here, flip. Okay, now I'm gonna give it one more test just to make sure everything un comes off nice and easily. There we go. Oh yeah, that's much better. Okay. We're set up now. All right, back up again and I'll show you how to get started on this ball winder. Okay, so I like to wind on the floor because the best thing is to have the Swift and the ball winder as close to an even height as possible. So ideally you'd have a long table or maybe a countertop, but I don't have that in my apartment. You also want a firm surface, so sitting on the couch or on your bed is just not gonna work because the ball winder is gonna like rock back and forth. So when you have these set up, you wanna definitely make sure the Swift has enough room to rotate. Your ball winder, you want the coiled end to be facing your Swift and the handle to be further away. So I'm right-handed, so I wanna have the handle on my right hand 
and then the coil right in the center of me, and then the ball line or the swift to my left. But if I was left-handed, I would just flip everything around. Okay, one more important thing about this swift, because I did this wrong. You can come down because I know that's hurting your hands. Um, on this particular ball winder, which I cannot recommend enough, it's amazing. You want to make sure that this coil, this little black end, is facing the shaft of the ball winder. Also, you want the dowel to be in as close as it can to here without touching. If you have this coil going the wrong way, as I did for many years, you will not get smooth cakes of yarn. Okay, now that everything is set up, let's actually start winding. Okay, so come in nice and close on the ball winder. Here, the swift is all set up, now it's just winding time. So I'm gonna take my end of yarn and I need to put it through this coil. So come right here to this coil here. So one of the easiest ways to go around the co coil, you don't, have to, you don't have to thread it through, although you can. One of the easiest ways is actually to wrap. Let me just get that out of the way. To wrap, so you go into the coil, around and around, and now I'm through the coil here. So <laughs> one more time, you go, into the coil and then just around and around and now I'm through that coil. Second thing, come right up here to the top of the ball winder. I'm just going to take my end and put it through that slot. Okay, and back up a little bit now. So I do have a bit, quite a bit of yarn that I've pulled out here and so I really need to make sure I kind of guide things as a start. I honestly like to always hold on to my yarn I hold on to it very loosely. Actually, I probably should take off these rings because you just want things to be nice and smooth. So I will hold on to my yarn, just kind of, I guess kind of putting my hand against the, um, the feeder here and just having like one finger to just loosely hold on to things. This just kind of feeds it through a little bit nice, more nicely. And if I get any tangles on this end, I kind of have a, like one place where it kind of gets boppered and stops. Okay, so here we go. We're gonna start winding. Start out nice and slow. Just turning whatever, um, there might be a specific direction here, but I like to rotate uh, clockwise. So I'm starting out really slowly because of all of this and see if I'm holding onto it here, that means I don't lose this tension. Nice and slow to get started because, of course, I've had to pull off quite a bit, so there's a little bit of a tangle. Nice and slow. If you get a knot, come back and then just kind of gently undo. The goal here is to get us start to start winding yarn off the swift. Okay, so now I've come to where yarn's going to start to come off my swift. And if you back up a little bit, you'll see, you can see everything. It's gonna to start to rotate. So even then, I'm still gonna hold on to things just very loosely and let it come through. Once things are going pretty nicely, I might pick up a little bit of speed, but the key is here is you don't wanna to go too fast. If you go too fast, you can actually make the yarn do a few things. It can come flying off the ball winder it can also like skip or jump, so it might start winding above or below your yarn cake. But if you just keep things nice and steady, that's the best. In a perfect world, we would not stop winding. We would just stay nice and even, which is why electric ball winders are a really great thing because they keep things consistent. But sometimes we get a knot or we have to get up and stop something. So just try to kind of keep it as even as you possibly can. All right, so that's all you need to do, and I will meet you back when this cake is done. Okay, we're kind of coming close to the end. This has been a really great skein, which is nice. I haven't had any issues so far with it getting tangled, but it's totally normal to get some stops and starts in a ball of yarn. So you can see on the swift here, it's coming to an end. I can pretty much wind just straight to the end, um, except 
I forgot that I wrapped around this several times. So you can see I'm almost to the end here. I'm just going to, if you want to come in a little closer, I'm just going to take this off of here and unwind it. And then to finish things off here on the ball winder, I'm just going to let it wrap up the last little bit. Now, something that I like to do, come in nice and close, is I actually will kind of unwrap it and then do like two just straight around wraps so that I can see these bars. And then I'll take that end and tuck it, sometimes twice, to keep it secure. Okay, you can come back a little bit. So this cake turned out really, really nicely. It makes all the difference to have a nice little ball winder and have this coil facing the right way. So to take things off, actually coming a little closer to take things off, I still have my center here. So I'm gonna loosen that up. And then from the bottom, I'm just gonna evenly push until it comes right off. And now we've got a really nice cake. I can clearly see my center pool and I can clearly see my other end if I need it to. Now, bonus points if you like to use a yarn cozy. I'm a big fan of these because I like to pull from the center of my balls and they will deflate. So to use a yarn cozy, I just make sure that the, uh, like the side, I guess, of this, that the yarn is coming through is on top. And then I'll put my hand around the whole thing to squish it because you do have to squish it in to here. And then you'll kind of pull it up and around like so. And there we go. One nice, beautiful cake all ready to go. So hopefully this helped to help you with winding yarn, whether you are somebody who already knows how to do it or a brand new beginner. And coming up next, I am going to show you how to take one cake and split it into two so that you can knit socks from two different skeins of yarn. So splitting them nice and evenly. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.